guys, so my name is Jeff and uh, this is my awesome 240 that I've been building for about a year and a half or so. I started off in the domestic scene with my uh, Chevy Nova, as you probably saw with uh, yesterday's video there. I've always been a muscle car lover at heart and I just wanted to change it up a little bit from naturally aspirated V8s to inline six turbochargers. This car uh, originally was uh, Brody Goebbels, if no one knows him, you can check him out on Instagram, Brody Goebel Motorsports. Um, and I guess he built this years ago as his, uh, I guess, first drift car. Um, put a lot of time and a lot of people were involved with it and he used it probably for some events and a bit of practicing and then sponsorships kind of started catching on and he eventually built a new car and this thing sat in storage for years and I was the lucky guy to actually get a chance to, uh, to buy it off him. what is going on I hope you can hear me right now uh, we shot Jeff's Nova yesterday Jeff's right beside me here again in the car and uh, we're in his 240 it's got an RB25 under the hood it's insane I, I mean what else is there to say look around see what this thing feels like I've actually never driven anything with an RB25 so it's exciting For those of you who are watching, it's like just after I eat in the morning, I got up maybe like an hour ago. Uh, this will wake you up like nothing else. I mean, you look at the floorboards, we can see the uh, see the road going by. Nismo two-way diff in the back, very aggressive. Throttle pedal is super heavy. The clutch throw is actually super short. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm like a little bit further back than normal, uh, that's just simply because the seats are bolted in place and uh, my legs are, I mean, they're long enough to operate the car. I'm doing fine, I think. Oh, shit. That feels like way more than like 450 at the wheels. And uh, being in a car like this that's set up not as a daily driver, like this is not daily driver friendly whatsoever. Um, you've got the harnesses, you've got the e-brake that actually doesn't really work in real world applications. Uh, but you know, shifters really fine. Once you get it going and other, like aside from the diff, uh, being super aggressive and the clutch being really grabby, it's pretty easy to drive. Uh, it's doing pretty well right now. So it currently has an RB25 in it. I bought it as kind of a, a, a solid rotating assembly that was already pre-built by someone else um, with low miles, um, forged internals, good rod bolts, head studs, the, the typical uh, modifications you would do on an engine of this kind of nature. What's awesome about this, and it's a big eye catcher if you know your RBs well, is that it's got RB26 uh, ITB, so individual throttle bodies, and the intake manifold that's adapted to the RB25 engine. It was developed years ago by, I believe, uh, Axel at West Coast Hot Rods, along with Brody Goebel, and uh, it's probably one of a kind. I've only ever seen maybe one or two online before that are similar in design. It might be a little bit large for the 2.5 displacement, like it does add with the adapter plates kind of sandwiched together. It does add a length, and, like in the take runners it does lengthen them so um, you do sacrifice a little bit of the bottom end torque but uh, definitely helps up top. Most of the car itself uh, retains like originally what was built by uh, Brody Goebel and his uh, his crew like the chassis and the, the fuel systems and a lot of the cage and whatnot the wide body as well as was all done by him. Um, I basically like like we talked about yesterday about my Nova I'm, I'm pretty handy when it comes to bodywork and paint so it's kind of a funny story I built it in uh, my, my buddy's parents garage uh, Brian Martell you can look him up on Instagram as well he's got a pretty uh, pretty killer kit car GTM that him and his father built in their garage um, and anyways this was kind of I guess that's what you do when you build a drift car when the guys build like race cars you use what you have available at the time I obviously didn't have a luxury uh, paint booth and all the supplies like I would have when I built my Nova at the time um, so I made use on actually a pretty clean garage that had a bit of a makeshift paint booth on it and uh, just kind of whipped something together made sure everything was clean and 
sprayed out some pretty killer metallic silver that I could find in a, in a paint book that I found, you know, caught my eye and it looks good in the sun. And, uh, and yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there are no words. Like, do you, you can't ever get bored of it or used to it. Like, <laughs> you don't come across people very often who will have uh, one or two big halo cars, you know, from the domestic side of things, the import side of things. The Nova was nuts, and this is like what a lot of people's absolute dream 240 would look like. Like an absolute dream car for a lot of people. Uh, so it's super cool. It's honestly, it's surreal getting behind the wheel of a car like this. attest to that definitely but oh my god boost really hits just after 4,000 rpm or so and this thing really wakes up uh, and just absolutely screams like the revs really carry The turbocharger itself was built, and if you've ever heard of um, my buddy Chris, he's Spectrum Motorsports, you can check him out on Instagram. He's probably the best turbo guru I know in the whole lower, lower mainland, and a lot of you guys probably have heard of him. Absolutely phenomenal. The turbo of its size is obviously, it's an older design, which you know, that would be a future upgrade. It's upgrade to more of a modernized turbo billet wheel that spools up a little bit quicker, but. I'd say the purpose of the car was to eventually maybe get into some circuit racing. Drifting would be cool as well. I mean, I don't have any sponsorships and, and tires definitely aren't cheap now. And especially when you put a lot of pride and joy into like your bodywork and paint that you do all yourself, you wouldn't like to smash it up as much as, you know, uh, the drift car scene likes to do. So yeah, essentially to get some track time on it, make it more of like a circuit track car and, uh, and also a, a safe and streetable, quote unquote, uh, street car. Now these older, you know, S body chassis are now, some of them are just extremely overly priced and, um, you know, for the most part, aren't really worth it, in my opinion, let's say. The inline six turbo, uh, just the, the sound and the adrenaline rush that you get from a turbocharged engine. I mean, it's, it's like no other. And to come into something that's just open wastegate, um, high octane, just screaming to 7,500 RPM or whatever it is, um, it's just, it's something else. It, uh, it leaves a smile on your face and, you know, it's something you can't wipe off. This is a very special car. A very, very special car. Really good turbo spool right outside the hood. That's honestly my favorite part about the car so far. And having like a locking dip and everything, the steering's like, I went from like the loosest steering car in the Nova to this, which is like the twitchiest thing. Uh, and like Japanese engineering in the 90s, just taken to the next level. Like, I'm sure when the Skyline first came out uh, with the RB25, not a lot of people were gonna expect like this application to this extent. Uh, but it's, the 240's an icon, like this car is a, uh, like I said, it's a lot of people's dream cars, so. I try to explain to them when we're not filming, I try to explain to my friends what it feels like to even just ride passenger in a car with like 450 wheel horsepower in a car that's like way lighter than 3,000 pounds. It's, it's unexplainable. A lot of people on the internet will just say, you know, oh, you need at least 800 horsepower to be like, competitive and to have some bragging rights in uh, 2017 like in the modified car world I 
mean, I completely beg to differ. I mean, when you're on your own on the like public roads with this car, yeah. <laughs> Torque comes on around four or five, the car is really happy. Uh, I would say it's good to experiment and, and to try different things, you know, on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. But you always want to have, in every guy's heart, I believe you always want to have a screaming loud V8 with some long headers and just uh, a cool kick ass, like straight pipe exhaust that you can go out and just <laughs> um, let everyone know that you're around and show up to kind of the, the coffee meets and stuff. Yeah, the suspension setup, I won't lie, honestly, I probably used a tape measure and some, ta and some like tape on my floor in my garage just to, to eyeball it for now because I haven't had a chance to get it into my, my work and actually I want to spend a full day on the, on the alignment. Anyways, I've kind of just stock form in a sense. It's got more camber up front and obviously more caster and just adjusted the spring rate on the coilovers. Yeah, so the ECU and all the tuning was done at Bill at Indy Speed Shop. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone else. If I can get off a little bit early from work and kind of hang out and kind of watch what he does, it's, it's pretty remarkable. And I'd eventually like to kind of be able to have my own laptop beside me and actually make changes to the, uh, to the programming on the car and stuff to, uh, to suit kind of my driving needs. But shout out to Bill at Indy Speed Shop. You can follow him on Instagram too. Uh, Indy Speed Shop, check them out for all, all your tuning needs, especially GTR tuning, and uh, anything else that you got. Yeah, this is definitely, this is like the definition of a, a week, just a weekend car. This is a uh, clear your senses, anything you want to get out of your head. This is like, you no, know, you have to focus everything on what you're doing. I'm super, te honestly, I'm super tempted just to come up to a corner and just fucking, just, <laughs> just try to slide it, but. But most importantly, thank you so much, Jeff, for letting me drive your cars, honestly. This has been ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. All right, you guys, this is it. This is Jeff's 240. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Go follow Jeff on Instagram. He's got some cool cars. He's got friends with cool cars. Uh, and if you're ever at any meets around uh, the lower mainland or something, I'm sure sometime this summer you might run into Jeff at uh, some local events or whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. Go tell your friends. Uh, we've got hats available on our store as well. We do a podcast every Wednesday on iTunes. Check that out and we'll see you next time.